Hi and welcome to another video here on my channel, UiPath with Jebe. Today we're taking a look at the second video in my series about document understanding. This is the digitize phase. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe to the channel. It would really help a lot. And if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to respond as quickly as I can. Now, this is the second video. And if you haven't watched the first video, I think you should watch that first. And there's a link to it at the top of the screen right now. But if you did watch the first one, I think we should just get to it. So let's go. So in the first video, we looked at document understanding and we have the three main phases of document understanding that is digitizing, classifying and extracting information from documents. And on either end of these three activities, we have the pre-processing and the post-processing. In the pre-processing, we may uh, prepare documents by scanning them or something like that. And in the post-processing, you know, we are using whatever information we extracted from the documents to whatever the need for the process is. So those are the three main steps that we're dealing with in this series, digitizing, classifying, and extracting. And if we look at these in a little more detail, digitizing is simply converting whatever is in the document to text. Classifying is determining what kind of document are we dealing with. And we use the classification scope activity to do that, along with one or more classifiers. And we can also use what's called the classification station if we are not sure about the classification that the machine comes up with. And finally, of course, we have extraction. And that is where we extract the specific needed targeted information from all of the digitized content that we have. So we may have a lot of text from the digitized phase, but we may only need a fraction of that to complete our process. And that's what we do in the extraction phase. But in this video, we're looking at the digitized phase. And then more videos will be coming out hopefully soon with the other phases. Now, the digitized phase basically is using one single activity, and that is the digitized document activity. That activity, well, it has three main uh, properties that we're interested in. As the input, we have the document path, and that's basically the path to a document, in this case, a PDF file sitting in a folder on my desktop. And then in the output uh, section, we have two values that we get back from the digitized activity, and that is the document text, which is simply a text string, and then we have the document object model, which is a more complex object. And I'll show you in fairly great detail a little bit later on in this video. Now, these are the three main uh, properties uh, that we're interested in. If we are going to take a look at the remaining properties, we have two that are of interest. That is the degree of parallelism property. And that simply determines how many of your CPU cores will be occupied or can be occupied by uh, processing pages. So if you have a quad core processor and you put three in this property, then three of those cores will be assigned to processing each their page. So you'll be processing three pages at a time. Now, by default, it says minus one in this uh, property. That simply means that you take whatever number of cores your CPU has and take one less than that. So if you have a quad core processor, this will use three of those cores to process pages. The other property that we want to look at is the force apply OCR property, and that is set to false. If you are working with PDF files, you don't always need an OCR engine because the digitized document activity can actually read native PDF files. But in some cases, a PDF file will contain, for example, an image that has text in it. And that's why you actually do need to drop an OCR engine into this activity. But by setting the force apply OCR option to true, you will always use the OCR engine to process your document. As you can see on the top right corner of my activity, I have that red warning mark. And that's because I haven't dropped an OCR engine into the digitized document activity. So if I do that, the warning disappears. And then, of course, we have that UiPath document OCR engine. And that in itself has a number of properties as well. And I'm not going to go through all of them because there are many types of uh, OCR engines that you can drop into this activity. And each of them has its own sort of set of properties, and it varies from engine to engine. But in this case, we're going to use the UiPath document OCR engine. And the two or three properties that you should be aware of in this engine is the API key. I'll show you where you can find that in the cloud platform and also the endpoint that you want it to connect to. If you don't want to do that, you can use the use local server property and set that to true. And if you do that, you will actually use a local OCI engine on your robot machine. That requires you to install a package, but I'll show you how to do that as well. 
The remaining properties you don't really have to pay much attention to in this case. The output values are irrelevant in this case because the output values of the digitized document activities are what we're going to use going forward in the process. So with a little bit of sort of theory out of the way, let's move into UiPath Studio. Okay, so I have a blank project here. And the first thing we want to do in document understanding is to import a, a couple of packages or at least one package. So we'll go to the package manager and up here we will use the official feed and then we will type in intelligent and that will find the UiPath Intelligent OCI Activities package. And we'll install that and save. And once that has completed, we will go into the main workflow. And I'll go to the toolbox and I'll search for the digitize document activity. We'll drag that into our workflow. And here you can see basically what I showed you in the slide deck before. We have the document path, we have the document text, and the document object model. And I'll click the little folder icon here, and I'll browse my way to the folder with my documents in it. And I'll scroll down to my uh, invoices here, and then I'll select an invoice. Click open. And now we've set the document path. Then for the document text, I'll just create a new variable by entering control K, and then we'll just type in doc text as the variable name. For the document object model, I'll press control K and I'll type in doc om for document object model. And if we now look at the variables pane, we can see that we now have a doc text and doc om variable and they are of type string and document. And the document variable here is the slightly more complex type that I mentioned before. And we'll take a look at that in just a few seconds. So we'll close the variables pane. And we'll see here that we have that red warning sign up here because we haven't dropped an OCI engine into the activity yet. So I'll just type in OCI in my toolbox and I will select the UiPath document OCR engine, drag it in, drop it. And there you go. Now the warning has disappeared. And if you remember, we do need to fill out a couple of uh, properties up here, being the API key and the endpoint. And if we go to my orchestrator or my cloud platform, Go into admin, into licenses, robots and services, and then I have my document understanding uh, API key over here. I'll just copy that, go back to studio, and paste it in. And then the endpoint we want to insert. We can find on the UiPath website, and we'll just go into my browser, and we can just type in UiPath OCR endpoints, go to the public endpoints page, find the UiPath document OCR endpoint, copy that, go back into UiPath Studio, go to the endpoint property, and then enter that. And now basically our engine is set up to connect to this endpoint with this API key, and it'll then um, digitize this document. And then before doing that, we'll just insert another activity to sort of pause the process. We will just insert a message box that says, hi. And now we're basically ready to run the process. Now I mentioned you could also run this UiPath document OCI engine locally on your local server by setting this property up here to true. And in order for that to work, you can see now we get a warning because we need to import this package, UiPath Document Understanding OCR Local Server Package. So if we go to the Manage Packages, go to the official feed, type in Local Server, then I could just select this, install, save. I'm not going to do that, but then the OCR would actually run locally on my machine. But I'm going to delete that property because I've entered the API key and the endpoint. And now if I run this automation, we should, when the automation halts at this message box, we should be able to inspect what has been extracted or digitized from this document. So let's try and do that. Okay, and the automation has halted. 
if we go to the um, locals window here, we can see each of the two variables that we saved the output from the digitize activity in the doc text and the doc om variables. And if we look at the doc text variable, we can see that this is simply the text that has been extracted from the document. So that's just a text string, no magic there. If we click cancel and then go to the doc om, we'll see a slightly different picture. Because if I click here, I can see the, the text here, and I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard and then go to Notepad. And I'll paste in what I found. And you can see it contains uh, quite a bit of information. Um, I'll just scroll up to the top here, and then I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and I'll fast forward the video while I do it. And then I'll get back to you in just a second. Okay, so I managed to clean it up a little bit. What you can see in this structure here is that we have a document and inside that document we have a number of pages and in the pages element here we have first one page that has a page index and some other stuff inside of that page we have a number of page sections we have eight in this case and inside of each page section we have a number of other properties in fact we have a word group inside each page section and a word group consists of one or more words. And if we look at the word group here, we can see that this has a length of 18. We can also see that it contains three words. So if we look at the words that is contained in this word group, we can see here, if I just place this right, we have three words. And the first word is uh, located at these coordinates. It uh, has the text invoice. And the next word is placed at some different coordinates and has the text number, in O and a dot. And then the final word in this word group is placed at another location and has the text 571806. So we are looking for some text that says invoice number 571806 inside of our document. Now, I just happen to have my uh, PDF uh, open. So we'll show that, and we can see that, in fact, the first text that we encounter inside the document is invoice number 571806. So the text representation, or this document object model, is a text representation, but it's enriched with a lot of metadata about the text. How confident is the OCR engine in that it has read the right text? In this case, it's one, which is basically completely confident. It has these uh, coordinates where the text is placed. It has the text and some other stuff that can then be used by the extraction engine once we get to that point in our document understanding process. So basically, digitizing the document results in two very important values. The document object model, which is what we just saw, a text representation enriched with a lot of metadata about the text, and then the text itself that we can also use. And that is all the digitize phase of document understanding does. It takes a document and then reads out the text from that document and creates a structure of that text and then saves those two values in these variables. And that is what digitizing is all about in document understanding. So far, we've covered the introduction, the document understanding overview. That was the first video. I hope you watched it. If you didn't, go back and watch it now. And then part two, digitizing documents, which is this video, where we, as I said, we simply get the text from the document and place it into these two variables. In the next video, we're going to classify the documents. That is where we look at the content of the document, and based on what the document contains, we are able to determine what kind of document is this. Is this a concert ticket? Is it an invoice? Is it a driver's license? Basically, it looks at the content of the document and it determines what class of document we're talking about. Then in the fourth video, we will extract that data, completing the three phases, digitizing, classifying, and extracting uh, of document understanding. Then we're going to do a fifth video about UiPath Action Center combined with document understanding. And finally, we are going to take a look at the document understanding framework, where we take all of these activities that we're looking at and use them in a framework and in a solution format that you can use for real world automations. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, 
make sure you subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Until then, please stay safe and take care. Bye.